Number seven, Rick Moranis. Actor Rick Moranis, who starred in several successful movies including Ghostbusters, Honey I Shrunk, The Kids and The Flintstones, was randomly attacked in Manhattan, New York City on October the 1st of 2020. The incident was captured by surveillance cameras and it showed the 67-year-old getting sucker punched and knocked to the ground by a man wearing an I Love New York hoodie. Moranis was left with minor injuries to his head, back and hip from which he eventually recovered. He took himself to the hospital and later reported the assault to the NYPD, which then released footage of it as part of their effort to identify the suspect. He would later be named as Marquis Ventura, aged 35. It was deemed unlikely that Moranis had been targeted because of his celebrity status, as he'd been wearing a face mask at the time and Ventura also had a history of assaulting strangers. A reported sufferer of paranoid schizophrenia who hadn't been taking his medication, he'd been to psych wars in seven different states. Prior to being arrested over a six-month period, Ventura had carried out five separate attacks. Hours after punching Moranis, he stole a bottle of champagne from a Soho bodega and then pummeled the owner who'd confronted him about the theft. Number 6. Dana Vulin Australian woman Dana Vulin was set on fire in February of 2012 by a woman who was under the mistaken belief that she was involved with her partner. Vulin, then 25 years old, had met Natalie Dimitrovska's estranged husband just once at a party and they'd only had a brief conversation nevertheless. Dimitrovska became convinced that the pair were having an affair and for weeks would call Vulin and threaten to murder her. While under the influence of amphetamines, the jealous wife and a companion, Daniel Stone, went to Vulin's Perth apartment complex. Dimitrovska broke into the home through a balcony, confronted Vulin and demanded to know her husband's whereabouts. As tensions escalated and while Vulin was holding a lamp with an open flame, Dimitrovska doused her with a bottle of methylated spirit. Looking back on the attack, Vulin remembered that suddenly the whole world was on fire. Flames engulfed her body from the waist up and she could hear Dimitrovska and Stone laughing at her before fleeing through a side door. She dropped and rolled, but in doing so, only spread the fire further around her torso. Desperate, Vulin went to the sink and poured a bucket of water on her body. She remembered that skin was falling from her fingers. As she then stumbled into the hallway screaming for help, Vulin was eventually found by Dennis Erickson, a man who lived in another building, who called the emergency services and whom she credited with saving her life. Over 60% of Vulin's body, including her face, arms and midsection, was covered in horrific third-degree burns, and the woman was in a coma for two days. She underwent over 200 procedures in the aftermath and documented her painful recovery in a book called Worth Fighting For. Its cover would show the extent of the damage Vulin had suffered as it displayed her partially naked and extensively scarred body. The woman reported that one of the worst aspects of her recovery was wearing a compression mask, which held her face together for roughly two years and eight months. Dimitrovska was arrested at the airport while trying to flee the country to Macedonia and subsequently sentenced to 17 years in prison for the attack. Number 5. Cutty Banks 30-year-old rapper Melota Lassie, professionally known as Cutty Banks, was gunned down in December of 2020 outside a Wells Fargo branch in San Mateo, California. Banks was ambushed by Isaiah Rupina, aged 34, who'd plotted to hit alongside a woman named Amanda Young. They were the brother and girlfriend of the late Louis Lucci Rupina, who'd been shot and killed while driving on the 405 freeway in Seal Beach in August of the same year. Young and Rupina had conducted what the authorities dubbed a street investigation, at the conclusion of which the former pointed to Lassie as her boyfriend's killer. The woman, reported as being in her late 20s at the time, believed that the shooting had been the result of a previous confrontation between Lassie and the younger Rupina at a marijuana dispensary in Compton. She convinced the deceased brother that Lassie had been responsible, and he planned the retaliatory shooting by tracking the rapper's movements through social media. He lay in wait and fired five bullets into Lassie's body, who was subsequently pronounced dead at the scene, then fled in a white Mercedes. The car would prove instrumental in identifying Rupina, as the culprit and in the spring of 2021, both he and Young were arrested on murder charges. An investigation carried out by the California Highway Patrol concluded that the latter had been mistaken in accusing Lassie. The rapper hadn't been involved in the shooting of Louis Rupina, which had actually been a result of road rage, meaning that he'd been gunned down for doing nothing. Number 4. Jade Matua In August of 2019, a woman was killed in West London after being run over by a police officer that was driving more than twice the speed limit. On the 13th of the month, 
Social Studies student Jade Matua, aged 22, was waiting for her boyfriend in Warwick Road, Kensington. Police Constable Gary Watkinson was driving a police car at a reported 64 miles per hour in an area where the limit was 30 miles per hour. Matua, described as a beautiful and innocent young woman by her family, was struck and suffered devastating injuries. She was left with a brain injury as well as a broken back, neck, ruptured pelvis and broken leg. Paramedics were able to revive her at the scene, but she was taken off life support two days after the incident at St. Mary's Hospital. An inquest was launched into the deadly collusion to determine if the police vehicle was responding to an emergency at the time, thus justifying the speed under which Watkinson was driving it. The case is ongoing as of 2021 and the victim's family have yet to receive concrete answers, with progress being delayed by the pandemic. But a preliminary police investigation found no indication that the officer had been operating the cruiser improperly. Number 3. Chad Gordon in May of 2020, at a home in North London, a man was fatally shot in the head in a revenge hit that was carried out at the wrong address. Mason Sani Semedo, age 19, and 20-year-old Cameron Robinson traveled to Chad Gordon's Tottenham home on May the 18th. Gordon, an autistic man described as a gentle giant by loved ones, answered the door. Upon doing so, one of the men shot him in the head with a 9mm handgun. 27-year-old Gordon collapsed and family members rushed to his aid, but he was beyond saving. The bullet had gone through his face and become lodged in his skull. Sani Semedo and Robinson held Gordon's aunt at gunpoint before fleeing. It subsequently emerged that a friend of theirs had been stabbed to death five days prior to the shooting and they'd gone to the wrong address where they suspected the killer lived. They mistakenly believed Gordon had been responsible, but had never been linked to any criminal activity. He attended a local Bruce Grove youth club for people with learning difficulties and was reported as shy and non-confrontational. Leading up to the attack, surveillance footage had captured Sani Semedo and Robinson driving on the streets, which weren't particularly crowded due to recent lockdown restrictions. After the shooting, they burnt the moped in Walthamstow Marshes, but were ultimately tracked down by law enforcement. It took a jury less than a full day to find them guilty of murder, for which they were sentenced to a minimum of 29 years in prison. Today's topic was requested by Risa Gaming. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Randy Rodriguez Santos' Killing Spree In a rampage across Chinatown in New York City's Manhattan borough, an attacker used a metal pipe to bludgeon to death four homeless men in their sleep. The horrific killing spree occurred on October the 5th of 2019 and the perpetrator was identified as 24-year-old Randy Rodriguez Santos, who was also reported as being homeless at the time. After 1 a.m. while wielding a 15-pound metal pipe, he began striking people in the head as they slept repeatedly and in quick succession. The attacks, as the authorities later reported, were completely random. Three of the victims were found on East Broadway, while another was found on the Bowery. They ranged in ages from 48 to 83, and one of the attacks was captured by surveillance cameras. There were also at least two victims who survived the brutal bludgeoning, and witnesses alerted the authorities. The police found Rodriguez Santos shortly after the incident had been reported walking near Canal Street. He was still carrying the murder weapon, which by that point had fresh blood and hair on it. He was taken into custody and after a psychiatric evaluation at Bellevue Hospital, charged with murder and attempted murder. Number 1. Knockout Game the knockout game, a violent trend, the frequency of which has reportedly seen an increase in the context of social media, involves sucker punching an unsuspecting victim in an attempt to render them unconscious with a single blow. The attacker will often be accompanied by accomplices who would film the punch and then post it online. There have been several incidents in which the knockout game, also known as Knockout King, has resulted in severe injuries and even death. 72-year-old Vietnamese immigrant Huang Nguyen was walking home with his wife after a trip to the market in St. Louis, Missouri, in April of 2011. Four teenagers, who'd allegedly been playing the game, approached the couple. Nguyen felt the threat and stepped in front of his wife to protect her. 18-year-old Alex Murphy broke away from the group, grabbed Nguyen's shirt and punched him with such force that he collapsed to the ground. The man later succumbed to blunt force trauma and Murphy was sentenced to life in prison, plus 25 years. In July of 2012, in West Roger Park, Chicago, Guatemalan man Delfino Mora was killed in similar fashion. Nicholas Ayala, Anthony Malcolm and Malik Jones were charged in connection to the incident and sentenced to 27, 30 and 33 years in prison respectively for murder and robbery. They were identified after the former uploaded a video of the attack to Facebook. As Malcolm was filming, Jones punched Mora in the jaw causing him to fall 
hit his head on the concrete and suffer a catastrophic injury. Jones then took $60 from his wallet before he and the others abandoned him in the street. Mora, a father of 12 who'd been collecting aluminium cans to provide for his family, died the following day. Thanks for watching. What do you do for a living and would you retire if you won $5 million in the lottery? Let us know in the comments section below.